Hi, AP Environmental Science students. It's me, Mrs. Willis, and I'm here to talk to you today about urbanization and urban sprawl. So let's go ahead and get started. Urbanization is a phenomenon where people leave rural areas and they move into city areas. So you may be asking yourself, well, why would you leave a rural area to go live in an urban area? And these are the top three reasons. Number one, there tends to be more industry and more jobs and more chances for advancement in those jobs in cities. Um, secondly, there are also high amounts of medical centers. So things like doctors and hospitals are usually present in these cities. And lastly, there are a lot of, um, of educational facilities that exist in these urban areas when you compare them to rural areas. As you can see, about 50% of the world's population lives in urban areas. And if you look at this map, you can see the major urban centers around the world. We are here in Los Angeles, which is a definite major urban area of the world. And this contains about 2% of our land area. Now, if we were just looking at America, it is estimated that about eight out of 10 Americans live in urban areas. We definitely introduced some reasons why people would move into the city, but urbanization does take a toll on the environment. One of the things that urbanization leads to is a loss of water resources, specifically freshwater resources. Uh, a phenomenon that can happen in urban areas is called saltwater intrusion. And this is, um, it pretty much pertains to groundwater infiltration. So in these urban areas underneath the ground, there are aquifers, groundwater aquifers. Now, if that urban area kind of butts up against an ocean area, it's okay because this aquifer that is fresh water if it's next to seawater, seawater is actually kind of heavy. And so it just sits or sinks to the bottom. And of course your fresh water floats to the top. And if you were a city planner trying to get water out of the aquifer, all you would have to do is build your well near the surface of your aquifer and pump out that fresh water and everything would be okay. However, if you continue to pull excess amounts of water from the aquifer without letting it be recharged, that seawater will start creeping deeper into your aquifer and it will start mixing with your fresh water and it can pretty much contaminate all of your fresh water with salt water, thus making it unusable. Another thing that can happen because of urbanization is the increased use of fossil fuels. So when people move to cities, they tend to use their air conditioners, they use their heaters, they use cars to transport them to their jobs or to other events, and all of those use fossil fuels as an energy source. The three fossil fuels, coal, oil, and natural gas. Anytime you burn those, it releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which causes global climate change. Another thing too, is that when people live in cities, they tend to generate trash in a central location. And we gotta put that trash somewhere, and that somewhere in an urbanized area is usually in a sanitary landfill. So we place all our trash in these giant holes, but as the bacteria are breaking down our trash, they release methane into the atmosphere. And methane is also a greenhouse gas. So these increased use of landfills actually lead to increased methane emissions in our atmosphere. A third thing that can happen with urbanization on the environment is the increased building of what are called impervious surfaces. So impervious surfaces are usually non-pourable surfaces. They don't allow water to infiltrate them. So in a city, they're very common. Roads, sidewalks, 
um, buildings, all of these things don't allow water to get into the ground to recharge those aquifers. So when you don't allow the water to enter into the ground, you actually cut your recharge off for your aquifers and it leads to increased runoff because all that water that is on your sidewalk and is in your parking lot, it runs off into the nearest storm drain here in LA. It goes out to the LA River and out to the Pacific Ocean. So it goes right into a saltwater environment. Urban runoff is also a really big problem in cities that have been urbanized. Uh, urban runoff, we see it as litter. It's pretty much trash that makes its way into a waterway and then goes out to um, the nearest biggest waterway, which for us would be the Pacific Ocean. So in developing countries too, they have these um, places that are called shanty towns. And it's kind of a, I don't like using the term, but these are towns that are built up, but they're very dense. People live right next to each other. Um, and they don't tend to have adequate water supplies and sewage disposal. And, um, and like, obviously they don't have sanitation where you can put your trash and it gets carried away by trash trucks every Friday. So one of the ways that they dispose of their trash is simply by placing it on the floor, or placing it in the nearest waterway to have it get removed from the city. But all of that trash, all of the littering that does um, run off somewhere. And so we do have increased levels of urban runoff in urbanized areas. Last thing that can happen in an urbanized area is noise pollution. And yes, believe it or not, noise pollution is actually a thing. Noise pollution is when you have increased noise levels, usually caused by city life. So when we get exposed to these noise levels all the time, it can really create stress, not only with humans, but with animals and organisms that are in our environment. Uh, so noise pollution is real and it is usually increased when you have lots of people living in a city together. A phenomenon that can happen with urbanization is something called urban sprawl. So you usually have the center of the city, like your downtown area, and then out from that downtown area, you will get residential housing that starts popping up that tends to be available and affordable. And there's a couple of reasons why historically urban sprawl started. One of those was because there are federal housing loans that kind of guaranteed this stimulated development of suburbs. So it led to developers developing land and um, being able to acquire loans to be able to do that and then of course they could sell them to the consumer. Another thing that leads to urbanization are gas prices. If gasoline prices are cheap, more people are willing to drive to work from further distances because it doesn't cost that much. And also here in America, we have put a lot of money towards developing freeways. And these are all government funded freeways and highways. And so this does encourage people to get in their cars and drive long distances to their work. Now, I know you're probably laughing because low cost gas, <laughs> that doesn't really exist here in LA at all. In fact, yesterday I paid $4 a gallon for uh, just one gallon of gas, but it is cheaper in other parts of the country and it still does encourage automobile use. Here in America, we also have tax laws that encourage home ownership. So when you buy a house, for example, you can write your property taxes off on your income tax and that reduces the amount of taxes that you ultimately have to pay every year. There are other things you can write off too, like if you do any energy saving things to your house, you can write those off. So there are different incentives that exist because you are a homeowner. So a lot of people will then want to buy and own their own home so they can cash in on these tax laws and tax incentives. However, you are gonna see that a lot of urban areas 
they do lack proper planning. So just taking a look at downtown LA, that is on a grid system. It's very square and there's blocks that exist. <laughs> but if you go out from there, it pretty much sprawls in all directions. And I would like to think that there is some sort of organization <laughs> that exists with all the different areas that, that are around downtown. But it really did just spring up sporadically because of this idea of urban sprawl. I just love this picture here because it shows you how Las Vegas has actually sprawled just recently. So in, in the picture to the left, you can see Las Vegas in 1973. And if you take a look at the picture of the right, you can see Las Vegas in 2000. So in just about 30 years, you can see how much more development exists in Las Vegas than compared to, you know, a while ago. So very interesting case study with urban sprawl in Las Vegas. Say your sprawl grows and it merges in with a neighboring urban area. <laughs> well, we call that a megalopolis. <laughs> and a very famous one is the Bowash megalopolis. And this occurs from Boston, Massachusetts, all the way down to Washington, DC. It's just one big urban sprawl that just eventually merged with itself. So when you drive to DC up to Boston, you're gonna see continuous development all along your drive. So what can we do to kind of control the sprawl and make city living better for all of us, right? Well, I think you can all probably agree that there should definitely be some alternate transport to help people get from point A to point B. So that could be increased bicycle lanes and bicycling. We could have increased rail usage. There could be increased bus lines. All of these things encourage people to um, leave their cars, to leave their cars at home so that they can get to where they want to go. But of course that takes planning. So you would need your city planners involved making those bike lanes, increasing the number of buses and transport um, mechanisms that are on the road, and of course, increasing the frequency of how often they come to ensure that people can take the public transport. And I must say, you gotta make it somewhat affordable, right? Because if it's not affordable, people won't take public transport. Here are some other ideas <laughs> lumped into one giant table about how you can kind of grow um, a little bit smarter than what we have done in the past. So a good idea is to kind of limit the sprawl. So you have your urban area and maybe placing a green belt around it, which is pretty much just a giant green space around a city to kind of keep the city from growing. Um, I like the idea of kind of revitalizing urban areas that have been neglected. In downtown LA for the longest time, it had it had kind of a, a more work feel, like you would just go there to work and you wouldn't live there. But over the past 20 years, we have seen developers move into downtown LA. They're revitalizing the area. They're building more living areas so people can actually live and work in the same place. So there are a lot of different things that cities can do to encourage smart growth, um, but it's not easy. So that concludes our urban sprawl talk. I hope this was helpful.